Hello and welcome. Now, if you were studying Washington Square as part of your upcoming exams, I thought it'd be useful to create a quote bank of relevant quotes for each of the main characters. Now, within this lesson, I'll be looking at Dr. Sloper's character. Of course, he is the primary, I would say, antagonist. Okay, so you've got our protagonist, which is um, Catherine. Catherine is our protagonist. And our two principal antagonists or villains are, of course, Dr. Sloper, her father, but of course, Mar Morris Townsend too, okay? Now remember that Dr. Sloper is an esteemed physician, he's a doctor, and especially a doctor in 1800s New York society who was very well placed and very wealthy, and he functions a lot of times as the gatekeeper in upper class elite society, and he constantly tries to cast Morris out of this elite society because he sees through his mercenary intentions, but also he doesn't see him as a gentleman, okay? Because he's not rich enough as he squandered his money. But also when we consider Dr. Sloper's character, he's often quite cruel to his daughter. He actually enjoys being quite mean and very controlling of her and he punishes her lack of submission to his iron will against um, the marriage or the engagement uh, between her and Morris Townsend. So she, he's quite cruel to his daughter and he often punishes her and even spitefully disinherits her towards the end of the story when he's quite old, he's quite ill and she doesn't give him a definitive promise that she will never marry Morris Townsend. So he's a very, very incredibly dislikable character, okay? I would say, especially when I was reading this book, I did not find that many redeeming qualities from him. I just think he was, a, he's an incredibly misogynistic character, but equally when you're writing about him, I think it's really important to illustrate the fact that not only is he a gatekeeper of upper class New York society in the 1800s, but equally he's quite cruel and spiteful towards his daughter, whom he uh, sees as a massive disappointment. He also maybe perhaps dislikes her because she was the cause of his wife's death as well, okay? So the first quotation and also the language analysis you can do with each quotation and the structural analysis you can do is of course when we realise he actually had had a first love which was Catherine's mother. So the uh, novel tells us he had married Ellipsis for love, okay? And of course the alliteration and he had illustrates that Dr. Sloper actually di didn't have a heart that was made of stone. There was once upon a time that actually he really loved somebody, which was his wife, okay? However, we could see his cruel, spiteful treatment of Catherine, perhaps as punishment for the role she played during the birth, uh, during her birth, in causing his wife's premature death, okay? Because his wife died a week later. However, we know that his wife was, of course, also very wealthy, so he married into elite society. He himself is wealthy, but he also married a woman who was quite wealthy. In fact, Catherine stands to inherit his mo uh, her mother's inheritance, which is substantial, and she can even live off that without even her dad's inheritance, okay? That being said, the fact that uh, Dr. Sloper married out of love is interesting because he had his choice to marry out of love, but he doesn't let Catherine exercise the same choice that she wishes to do, which is marry Morris Townsend out of love, okay? So he closely controls Catherine, but actually he's a little bit hypocritical because he married a woman out of love. The next quote relating to Dr. Sloper is when we learn that he never asked for explanations which he could entertain himself with inventing. And this is a declarative sentence. Remember, the declarative sentence is a sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood. Now, what this declarative sentence shows us is Dr. Sloper is actually quite arrogant. He's a very arrogant person. He thinks he's very intelligent. He thinks he's always right. He never questions his own judgment, okay? And of course, um, to some extent, he is right about, or to a great extent, he's right about Morris's character. However, how he executes what he believes is what perhaps we as readers find quite reprehensible. We see it as quite disgusting and terrible, okay? So we can see that Dr. Sloper is very arrogant and he feels like he's very intellectually superior, especially uh, superior in contrast to his daughter, Catherine, who he sees as very plain, a little bit disappointing. And of course, Mrs. Penniman, he sees her as also his intellectual inferior. The third quotation which we can relate to Dr. Sloper is when he makes his summary judgment of Morris Townsend's character. He states, I know him enough. I have my impression of him. And of course here we've got repetition of the pronoun him. Here we can see that Dr. T uh, Sloper is the gatekeeper. He functions or acts as the gatekeeper of upper class society. He has judged Morris as not being part of the crop 
of upper class men and hence he has decided to completely um you know stonewall him he has refused him any access into the sloper household he also has totally and adamantly refused the engagement he's totally disapproved of him okay so we can see here that class is incredibly important to dr sloper who catherine marries and his status in society is incredibly important to him the next quote which illustrates you know how he looks down on morris townsend is when he states that morris has not the soul of a gentleman. And again, this is a declarative sentence. Now here, the reference to the fact that Morris Townsend doesn't have the soul, there's something within him that isn't what he considers a gentleman. Again, what this is illustrating is how status and class is incredibly important to Dr. Sloper, okay? He makes a judgment of Morris. Also, of course, hears that he doesn't have any money coming in. And he refuses to have his daughter be associated with somebody who's not a gentleman, i.e. a wealthy upper class man who has an, his own inheritance that he's bringing to the marriage. The next quotation that illustrates just how cruel Dr. Sloper is towards his daughter is when he states, or when we learn, no young man from his perspective, ellipsis, so no young man ellipsis will ever be in love with Catherine. And of course here, the notion that no young man will ever be is hyperbole, over exaggeration. Now what this is illustrating is Dr. Sloper thinks his daughter is actually very pr plain, maybe even ugly. And we can see here that one of the reasons why he totally objects to Morris marrying Catherine and why he's so suspicious is because Morris is so handsome and Catherine is just so plain. He really looks down on his daughter and he um, sees her and views her with disdain, okay? And this is illustrated especially through this hyperbole. The next quotation, which obviously illustrates Morris, um, or rather Dr. Sloper, knows and can clearly see through Morris Townsend's mercenary goals, right? So Morris is trying to marry Catherine to make money out of her or to at least inherit her money is when Dr. Sloper says, however much he may value your personal merits, he values your money more, okay? So he's telling Catherine, you know, yeah, 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 he might value you as a person, your personal merits, but your money is more important to him, okay? So however much he may value your personal merits, he values your money more. And the repetition of the word value, which is obviously tied to monetary interest, money, illustrates that Dr. Sloper can clearly see through Morris's tactics. He can clearly see that Morris is actually quite scheming and conniving and he wants to marry Catherine so that he can get both inheritances from Dr. Sloper's, um, the, the inheritance he's gonna leave over equally um, Catherine's own mother's inheritance, okay? So, or rather the inheritance she's gonna get from her mom. The next quotation, which obviously illustrates that Dr. Sloper knows that his cruel um, rejection of their engagement and his treatment of Catherine, he knows that he's quite cruel and he agrees that I am resigned to her thinking me a tyrant. And tyrant, of course, is hyperbole over exaggeration. Again, what this is illustrating is he knows he's being really mean to Catherine. He knows he's being spiteful. And he just says, oh, I'm just resigned to her, you know, thinking that because I've refused Morris to marry her, I'm a tyrant. And again, what we can see here is that Dr. Sloper actually takes a lot of glee in causing pain to his daughter, okay? So he's an antagonist. The next quotation relating to his character is when he uh, realizes that Catherine is dead set on marrying Morris and he, you know, resignedly says, oh my gosh, we have fattened the sheep for Townsend before he kills it, which is an exclamatory sentence. It's showing, it's ending with an exclamation mark, it's showing his strong emotions, okay? He says, we have fattened the sheep for Townsend before he kills it. Now, this exclamatory sentence, and of course the reference to the sheep is a metaphor, okay? This is directly referring to Catherine. Again, illustrating that Catherine doesn't have um, an ability to think for herself. So again, he's also insulting her. What this is illustrating is that Dr. Sloper, is clearly aware of Morris's mercenary intentions to marry Catherine just for her money. And he's basically saying, oh, we've prepared her and we're gonna leave her with all this money only for Townsend to use it and to squander it all. The next quotation, the final quotation, which illustrates just how spiteful he is in his treatment of his daughter is when we learn her father, which is of course Dr. Sloper, never looked at her, never spoke to her ellipsis. He rather enjoyed having to be so disagreeable. So he literally gives um, Catherine the silent treatment. He doesn't look at her. He really punishes her for something that is actually a very natural feeling, just falling in love with a guy. And again, remember, as I've mentioned in the opening quotation, he married out of love, right? However, he's hypocritically punishing Catherine for falling in love with another man, okay? Now here we can see, especially through the repetition of never, okay? What this illustrates is Dr. Uh, Sloper 
really does also take a bit of glee about a bit of a perverse pleasure in causing a lot of pain to Catherine okay so we can see him as a very antagonistic character I would say that we as readers are not meant to look at him in any other way but with disdain especially in how he treats her, his daughter okay but of course he is able to clearly see through Morris and he functions as the gatekeeper to New York elite society especially by casting him out of the marriage to Catherine which should have placed him really comfortably and firmly back up in New York elite society so that's really it when it comes to quotations to revise if you are writing or studying about the character of Dr Sloper in Washington Square